Hi, I'm Raquel from Los Angeles. I'm here, I'm here with Matt Craig, the sort owner of Chicago Party On. Hi, how are you? Good, very good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks uh -huh. to you. Well, my first question is, uh, did you take any inspiration from the back, from the vibe of the any other animation? Like there was a specific move that you were going for? Uh, well, coming into it, knowing that it was going to be adult animation, you know, I certainly, I'm a fan, obviously, of animation and certainly <laughs> adult animation. Um, so it took a lot of just like kind of digesting as much as I could. And going into it, all I knew is that I just didn't want this to solely exist on the level of it being a show, an adult show, a mature show. Um, my background and a majority of the people who work on the show's background has a lot to do with Second City. And the Second City has a lot to do with relationship-based comedy. And so my main goal heading into this was I wanted to have some true um, heartfelt emotive stories that you could hang all the other accoutrement on uh, as we brought it together. So I think looking at some of the other stuff and knowing that I was going to be working with Netflix, um, you know, I did look at some of their stuff that's currently out there, like Big Mouth and BoJack and some of the shows that came before to make sure that I was going to be living in that same kind of a wheelhouse that they were in. Um, but with as far as like trying to do too much where I was trying to lean into uh, doing too much of a nod to other shows, I didn't want to do that. I wanted this to stand out in its own kind of unique way. So aside from knowing that I really wanted the stories to resonate uh, as heartfelt and, and earnest, the rest of it, I think I kind of left up to our artistic team to make sure that it came across in a unique voice. Okay, awesome answer. Well, my next, my next question is, uh, how was the process to mm, coming with the idea and then make it happen? Tell us how, how this type of show is created. Tell us something about it. Well, the, no, no, that makes sense. The, well, initially, <laughs> the, the best part about the show was that the, the Twitter feed was created by Chris Witoski, who brought that to John and uh, John Bernholtz and Katie uh, Rich to create the, the story, uh, the, the world that we were going to be in. And so the character was pretty well defined when we went into it. Um, and as far as how the writer's room came up with the ideas of what we we're going to do, it was very much like, where, where do we want to see this character go? What growth are we hoping to see her go through, um, especially in this relationship with her nephew and how that was going to incorporate, um, how that was going to how, how they were going to affect one another. How was this younger uh, entity going to affect the older one and vice versa? So a majority of the ideas, and that's always the fun of any writer's room, is getting together and being and basically having that opportunity to say, what, what do we want to do to this person? What, you know, what struggles, what highs and lows? Um, and so some, it oftentimes would come from a simple someone being like, what if she couldn't drink for a day? What if she, you know, and so when you hear certain things like that, then you just start brainstorming them and you build the world around based on the emotional choices and the residency that would happen amongst that family. So and this was an incredible group of people to work with because we all had a similar background and knew each other uh, for the most part prior to actually getting into that writer's room. So it really felt a little bit like coming home, uh, you know, to some of the, the ideas of when we were creating sketches and the like when we were in the theater scene in Chicago. This was very similar to that kind of feel, but always fun and always fun to kind of be like, what do we want to do to her? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, talking about the future, uh, is the plan to make this a uh, long running show or do you have a set number of season in mind? Well, the hope is, is that it could, you know, it, that it resonates with enough people and it, and it lives perpetually, that it goes on and on and on for years and years and years. Uh, I certainly think that we created a world that is recognizable and approachable uh, with, you know, many people who will hopefully be watching and, uh, this is very much as far as the way the, the show is currently aligned, that it does have obviously a beginning and a middle and an end as it you know comes out. But the hope is, is that uh, just like in real life, uh, stories begin and end all the time. And then you, you start the other one or they start internally, you know, they overlap. And so there are a ton more stories than what we've already done uh, for this world and for these people. And so the hope is, is that, um, you know, knock on wood. <laughs> it it, it can perpetuate. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, spread the word. Tell your friends, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next question is uh, what can we expect from season A versus season sorry uh, season part A versus season part B of the season can we expect <laughs> uh, well the first a lot of what this first season is is just kind of really I mean initially just like with any series initially it is very much about introducing this, these people letting you get in, getting comfortable with them and ingratiated with them and starting to figure out who you're going to root for and who you're not going to root for, uh, and certainly raising the stakes. The entirety of this whole season, soup to nuts from that, the first ones that are coming out, as you're calling it, A and into B, there, it is conclusive. It will go full circle and there is an answer at the end of it. And it is one perpetual story. Um, But they're also all very much individual. They're all standalone episodes. You don't really need to watch them in order. It certainly helps if you do, um, which was all part of the plan of uh, trying to recreate the day-to-day -day messiness and isolation that you can feel while also being cohesive as a part of a bigger family and a bigger story and a bigger storyline. Um, so the, the, the good news is, is that if you watch it in its entirety, I think there is a satisfying conclusion, but hopefully at the end of that, you're like, man, it would be really fun to see, you know, more of this. Where does this go? What happens? And, we've, and we do have that, uh, we do kind of explore that a little bit by the end of, of this season. And wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this question is time to confess. Do you have a favorite? a character from the soul. <laughs> Do I have a what? Can you repeat? A favorite character from the soul. Like a, a the favorite episode? Favorite, see, episode and, and character. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was lucky. I'm really lucky <laughs> on this particular show because I, my joke was always whenever we would finish and I'm still finishing, um, I'm still working on the show. And so I'm still finishing uh, the back half of that, the, the B season, as you called it. Um, and my joke is always when I, when I finish another one, I'm like, this is now my favorite episode because I do feel like everyone comes, comes up to this level, but boy, oh boy. Um, there are some that is just, it's intrinsic in any job, anything you do that seem to come together and, and really capture the spirit more. Um, and man, uh, It's, it's a little bit hard to pick between all of them. There's a tailgate episode that takes place in that first season that has a soft spot in my heart uh, because it really, I think, is the episode that, that finally kind of encapsulates both the turmoil that these characters have and, and the love for one another that they have. Um, but to be quite honest, they're all... The Christmas episode's really great. There's a really fun episode. I mean, th there's a lot of really fun episodes. Hard for me to choose. Um, and I always say that every, you know, as long as there's two or three moments in any episode that to me make you say like, this was worth watching. This was uh, something different. Uh, and that's my goal in any episode that I make. And so they're all good. You know, they're all great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. love that answer yeah <laughs> my next question is yeah. what, what is uh, the storyline that you are more more excited to people to see which which what am i most excited uh, for people yes to see? Uh, what is the storyline that you are most excited to people to see like i uh, want to <laughs> Well, I think, I think above and beyond any other thing, I think there's um, something to be said about this universal understanding that there are some people who are, who are antiquated, who are stuck in their past, who do really have, uh, who are on the right side of history, but are jaded in the way that they've, they've just been around a long time. Our main character, and I love this facet of our show, is a woman with a heart of gold who loves everybody who's just kind of stuck in who she was in, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. She's just kind of, she's been in that, uh, speaks without thinking, but loves, un, you know, without, without any regard. She just explodes with love. But the times have changed around her. And that's the part that I'm most excited for people I, to, to experience, right? That idea that 
Um, you can be in the right place, mindset and heart as a human being, but the world can change around you. And when that happens, you can still look antiquated and out of sorts and not politically correct, even though you always have been. You were ahead of the curve being politically correct before politically correct was a term. And so that, I think, is what I'm most excited for people to start to explore. I mean, the idea that people have been around and loving everyone equally, you know, being colorblind to, to society and ethnicities and sexual preferences, and then finding yourself just because 25 years have passed, some of the colloquialisms, the linguistics, the way you refer to it have changed around you, even though you, you are in, if Diane was born today, she, you know, there will be, that's the part, I guess, another way to look at it is there are people that are today are 20 years old who are going to as politically correct and as ahead of the curve as they might be now in 30 years, they will look antiquated too, because the world changes underneath you, even if your intentions are our spot on, if that makes sense. Best answer, makes absolutely sense. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Let's oh my goodness, this was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks thank for interviewing you. me. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.